coming to you guys live Wednesday morning, um, March 22nd. I'm Scott Ramp, and welcome to Wake Up Missoula. We got a lot of stuff to talk about today. We got some a little bit of city council. It was a nice little short meeting, so I'll have a little bit of that along with your committee uh, report, committee meetings report tease. I got some news. I got some weather for you guys. The snow, no more on the snow report, so I'm going to be talking about that. I got my new stop motion anthology this week, and I also have events. So let's kick off with a little bit of weather. So currently it is 37 degrees outside. Your high is going to be 53 degrees with a 30% chance of showers. Um, and then Thursday, it's going to be mostly sunny with a high of 50 degrees. Um, it's a good day to be out and about. Um, it, uh, well, it looks to, like to me, um, uh, the, the days I basically have the afternoon off, it all rains. But Thursday, when I'm going to be working here at MCAT all day, it's going to be nice and sunny outside. How is that for uh, fair? Um, so you have that low of 30 degrees uh, happening Thursday night. Friday, you have that 54 high with a partly sunny 20% chance of showers. Friday and then Saturday, it's going to have that 70% chance of rain turn into a 50% chance of rain over the um, Friday and Saturday um, days. And we'll have more about your weather this Friday. But in the news, if you haven't already heard, that uh, they'll be uh, doing a um, a new committee. Um, so after 10 years, after the original advisory committee disbanded, the Missoula County Fairgrounds will have some more people um, to have a say in the year's Western Montana State Fair. Um, Emily Bentley, who was appointed the director of Fairgrounds Development not too long ago, with a new board system, some of the challenges the Missoula County Fairgrounds would be to figure out ways to get people to go to the fair without the draw of horse racing along with construction of newly updated fairgrounds. Missoula's old director at fairgrounds, Todd Garrett, was quoted in saying that the ranching part was one of the biggest in the state and the new construction would emphasize easier access to those who are showing their livestock. Um, here's a, here's an, an idea to help draw people to the Missoula County Fairgrounds. Maybe you have a sponsor like Bernice's Bakery or Black Cat Bakery to do like a pie eating contest. You know, that's just right there. Oh, Oh, and another good idea would be like to have a Missoula College do some kind of thing with their culinary school program because they already have a big draw with a lot of their, their carnivore classic. It would be also a good um, promotional thing for the Missoula College as well to do anything like that. But that's mostly a suggestion. It's not really part of the news. It's more like, hey, Missoula College is doing really well. Their culinary program is amazing. And it would be a really cool thing if the culinary program were to do thing that particular time during the uh, Missoula County Fair just kind of emphasize that. I wanted like an actor, some kind of like big demonstration thing with some of the professors. Um, they, since the program is growing like crazy, um, it would be a good way to get more enrollment and more people to sign up along the lines or more people interested and more people for the culinary program. Um, but he, um, the advisory co committee will plan to meet in April. Um, they already have the board all pretty much set up. Um, but you can always still inquire with Emily Bentley, who is also a city council member uh, for the city of Missoula, about any questions or comments you may have. Um, in the state, an act revising laws related to non-resident hunting, um, establishing Missouri River breaks, non-resident archery only subseasons for elk, six requiring 10% of limited hunting licenses and permits issued for certain species to seven be issued to non-residents. Um, an increase in hunting tags for tourists from out of state is basically what that it means. So. Um, they, they say that this would add an additional $147,000 to Fish, Wildlife, and Parks. Also, all the tickets that these potential new folks would have, um, because the tourists, you know, they have a tendency to um, um, not really follow a lot of the um, regulations of Montana Fish, Wildlife, and Park, so they have to pay even more fees if they do break the uh, the hunting laws as well. So that also brings some more revenue as well. Um, I think that also might be part of the revenue. So Fish, Wildlife, Park, and also said um, uh, that they should uh, not be controlled by the legislator and should have commissioned um, by themselves. Um, they they were they also said that the billions. Also, they said in the Billings Gazette that the Helena alone, there would be 10 fewer elk tags for resident hunters. Uh, but, of course, no action was taken on this bill, and it, it, it's not going anywhere, basically. Um, in national ne news, uh, Neil Gorsh um, is up for a second, his second day of confirmation. Yesterday he was. Today is the third day of hearing for the Supreme Court judge. In an article I got from NPR said that the this white man would bring diversity solely because he's not from a Colso state like the seven other judges. Um, 
I watched part, part of day two, and uh, it's asking you know questions to show some kind of bias toward the judge in some ways. Um, it's less about the qualifications and more about whether or not he's against or for certain things that the uh, senators are asking him. Uh, day three is going on as we speak. I also I also have a clip that I kind of want to show you guys, but so here it is. Here's Neil Gorsh. I just wanted to say that I don't think you have to respond, but what I'd really like to talk to you about, Senator, may I? Sure, um, absolutely. I, I don't, I don't mean to eat up your time or anything, but this is this is exactly the sort of thing I think I've been trying to convey to, to, to members of the committee, which is it's my job to decide these cases without respect to persons. There is the little guy right there. He's a criminal defendant. It's unsympathetic. I completely I, I understand everything you're saying about it. It's all true. The question is still, does the government have to prove what the law requires of the government or anybody, the big guy? All right, so uh, this is uh, Neil Gorsh, and he is in day three of the hearings whether or not to appoint him as a Supreme Court judge. Um, the Supreme Court has, hasn't had any uh, – um, they, they basically had a vacancy for quite a while now. And now they're just trying to figure out whether or not Neil Gorsh has what it takes to be on the Supreme Court. Because the, the Supreme Court is a lifelong responsibility. It's usually associated with how long the person you need to live for or how long they are mentally capable of doing that. I don't I, I mean, even like if you're not if even if they're not mentally capable of doing that, they they have to choose on their own um, accord to basically say is like, hey, I am not fit to do this job. I'm going to resign. So a lot of times they either die while they're Supreme Court justices or a lot of times they're just like, I'm getting too old. I don't want to, I want to spend my, uh, the rest of my years uh, not uh, being a Supreme Court judge, that kind of thing. And Supreme Court judges are usually associated with folks who are um, retired from being judges in a way. So it's kind of like between the ages. So Neil Gorsh is one of the uh, younger looking judges to be uh, appointed as Supreme Court judge. But of course, day three continues. You can watch it on any live stream. I just took that live stream from NPR.org where I got the basic information from um, Neil Gorsh's uh, confirmation hearing. Um, so they're just talking about that. So uh, moving on, that basically concludes everything you need to know about what's going on in the news and around. But let's bring it back. Let's talk about uh, Missoula a little bit. Um, we have some new programs I have to sh I want to show for you guys. Um, this is the newest programming that's going to be on MCAT. It's the International Development Series that we got uh, the Jack Metcalf uh, hooked on art. We got an artist who went down to uh, Bonner Schools to talk about his art. We also have the uh, Global Public Health where they talk about um, um, availability of uh, supplies and um, nurses in um, countries that don't have um, kind of like those, I don't want to say third world country because it's kind of against what I talk about, but that's basically what they're talking about. Um, so uh, without further ado, here's all the new stuff on MCAT. And when we come back, I'll talk about all the new things that are happening with Missoula Community Access Television. And you realize when you start looking at who are these 20 children, you realize they live in some village which is about two hours away from where the school that you are teaching in. Then you realize that they really don't know each other and you have not created that space. So if you have to be effective, you have to be able to capture all these small details in your monitoring data and be able to see it across your program, to analyze it and then to see what does it mean to my program. So that's what your monitoring data does. Whereas your evaluation data, though it does speak to your program, the understanding of evaluation is not assessment. It's about understanding what is it that we achieved? Why did we do what we did? What was the change that happened or didn't happen? And why did it happen? Prints. And what I do a lot of times is just I print a lot of imagery and then later I collage it together in uh, different and new and exciting ways to make one of a kind pieces. Um, this too shall pass is one of my favorite quotes. Um, I guess it's historically known for it can bring the proudest man down and it can make the, what, the poorest man happy because everything's temporary, um, everything's subject to change. A lot of my themes in my work deal with time and things passing, thing, new things becoming old, uh, things that are ephemeral. Um, and I'll talk a little bit more about that as I go along. So the nurses were great. For the, I mean, they really were. If they didn't want to do it, they didn't have to. And as it turned out, we never had a patient in the care and isolation unit. So good news. Yes? I noticed that this virus is a problem. 
Now there's a really good question. So um, actually, the hospital where we were, they did have a blood bank. Okay. Um, and we could draw, and we probably could type and cross people for blood, but we were so resource poor. I mean, we had the, the ability was there, the personnel wasn't there. All right, so you can check out all those programs on MCAT tonight and tomorrow on MCAT Channel 189. But also, some of the MCAT news that are happening in and around Missoula in general is that MCAT going to be uh, basically showing off our new uh, virtual reality device, among other uh, things as well. We're also doing a bike raffle. If you log on to MCAT.org, you can sign up for a bike raffle and have a custom-made bike that will be presented at our Earth Day um, Free Cycles um, Earth Day um, thing. So uh, the whole idea is that we're going to be bringing our VR down to uh, Free Cycles. We'll be uh, celebrating Earth Day with Free Cycles along with MCAT bringing down virtual reality just to kind of like show off um, Google Earth VR, just kind of like give a nice little scope of showing things and whatnot. It, it's going to be really cool. You guys are more than welcome to join. Um, you can check out freecycles.org for more information. Also, you can go to MCAT.org for more information and to sign up for a custom-made bike made a special for um, MCAT and for Earth Day as well. Um, we also are hosting um, in May 5th, Cinco de Mayo, MCAT's going to be hosting a uh, kind of like a big party. It's like a big party to celebrate our 27th anniversary of being a uh, Ex being existed. We, we've existed for 27 years uh, from Earth Day, but we're going to be celebrating on May 5th at the Downtown Dance Collective, where we'll be also doing some VR stuff. So there's a whole bunch of VR being involved, especially with the later late uh, April and mostly the month of May, where we'll be basically taking our VR system out of MCAT, which you guys can come down to MCAT anytime between 11 and 7, Tuesday through Friday, um, and show, you know, get, get a, an experience of virtual reality. It's a nice free way for us to kind of share with the community and everything that you see on MCAT, everything that uh, we do for the community is for the community and the community can come down and do it themselves as why. It's a very do-it-yourself kind of uh, television station that most we encourage most people and we also show people how to uh, um, do uh, certain things in terms of television production or video production. You can learn more information by logging on to MCAT.org you can also have us do shoots for you as well. We can uh, request an event recording under how do I request an event recording, submit a program. So if you are a person who has a program but really wants it to uh, premiere in certain places, you guys can give us a program. We do not take the rights from you. We just show it on our channel and be like, okay, thank you, cool. Um, but also uh, we, you can register for our summer camp. So if you have any kids, between the ages of 9 and 13 and a uh, teenage or teenagers we have a teenage camp for our summer zombie workshop so we have kids for 14 and older for kids who are teens mind you if you uh, teens want to do a zombie makeup and zombie camp as well so we'll be working on that as well we have uh, you can apply for a summer camp scholarship for uh, one or uh, for one of these camps as well um, but to find more information go to MCAT.org and click one of those links to our summer camps and um, there's also a couple pictures from our summer camps as well and our Saturday stop in animation is a great way for uh, kids to get um, uh, basically get their feet wet in terms of MCAT because we not only do uh, Saturday animation but we also do Saturday uh, media in general so we teach kids um, who want to learn about um, editing, video recording, pictures, all sorts of uh, media type stuff every Saturday from 1 to 5 and that's geared for kids age 9 to 13. Um, if you want more information about that log on to MCAT.org, but if you want more information about Wake Up Missoula, you can log on to wakeupmissoula.wixsite.com slash wakeupmissoula. So nice we made you write out all that wonderful stuff. Be sure to like us on Facebook, follow us on Twitter, and uh, subscribe to us on YouTube to find out more videos and more, but also this website has everything you need to know about updated uh, last episodes, current episodes, uh, teen talks, you got dubbing stuff, and stop animation um, of the week. And speaking of stop animation of the week, it is Wednesday, and it's time for me to show you my newest uh, stop animation of the week. And when I come back, I'll talk everything you need to know about City Council.
is. Uh, all right. Uh, no, no, no. Hey guys, welcome back. And now I got some city council for you guys. Uh, there was a proclamation for uh, the volunteer. Uh, let me just double check. There's an outstanding neighborhood volunteer proclamation read by uh, Missoula's own president of the city council, Marilyn Marler. So without, mm, hold on a second. I didn't get this ready for you guys. Oops. Okay, so let's, uh, before I get the video just kind of all squared away, let me just talk about some of the community meetings. They're going to have six community meetings happening today, all the way from 9.15 until about 12.30, um, 1 o'clock. Um, they're talking about, uh, they, uh, they, they also have the Committee of the Whole, and they'll be talking a little bit more about that as well. Um, I mean, it's a really short city, um, city council meeting that we had. Um, let's see here. Just bear with me. Okay, so uh, without further ado, here is uh, Outstanding Neighborhood Volunteer. Seconds of local volunteerism and dedicated neighborhood service. Now, therefore, John Engen, Mayor of the City of Missoula in the state of Montana, do hereby proclaim March 20th, 2017 in Missoula, Montana as Karen Sippy Outstanding Neighborhood Volunteer Day and honorably declare the month to be Outstanding Volunteer Outstanding Neighborhood Volunteer Month, and I urge all citizens to join in recognizing their profound connection to place and to each other by offering their service for the betterment of their own neighborhoods in challenging and meaningful new ways during this commemorative month and beyond. And I'm going to bring this around and give you a hug. Okay. Did you, did you want to say a few words? Just, I wanted to thank everybody. Thank my husband for his support, Grand Creek Trail Association. Um, I was thinking today, my first advice, speaking to city council 10 years ago was, just don't cuss. <laughs> That's what they asked me to do. I'm like, I think I can handle that. They know me very well. But um, everyone here has been so unbelievably supportive. And um, it's nice, as my husband was pointed out, to be able to come up here and thank you instead of asking you for something. <laughs> um, and I appreciate truly um, everything that all of you have done. I really wish Donna Gockler was here so I could thank her personally. But Chris Foza has been an unbelievable partner for the urban forest and really anything crazy that I say, let's do this. He says yes. <laughs> and we get to figure it out and we get to have great, great projects for the city of Missoula. And I just love Missoula so much. All right. so. Um, the Outstanding Neighborhood Volunteer is usually has been going on for over 13 years in the city of Missoula to uh, highlight uh, folks who have go uh, gone above and beyond uh, helping to make Missoula a better place um, by offering uh, free service to the city of Missoula. And I want to congratulate her once again for uh, ach uh, achieving this award. So that was just kind of like uh, the one thing that really just kind of stood out for the uh, city council meeting. They talked about a little bit of this, a little bit of that, but they kind of mostly stuck to this. Um, they had the consent agenda where they talked about the, um, let's see, da, 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 appointments to planning boards, uh, <laughs> five-year lease to Ryman Street. You got waiver of Missoula Municipal Code, uh, just a whole bunch of this and that. There's a award, a street maintenance construction for uh, Brian Hensel. Ooh, ooh, cool. But yeah, that's uh, mostly the biggest bulk of it. Um, uh, of course, the meeting didn't go. I mean, what, uh, what the, a lot of it was with public comment um, for this and that. Um, the last half was about this volunteer proclamation and legislation update, where they did talk a bit, a little bit about um, Missoula as a sanctuary city in terms of like how they can go forward with legally doing that. Since um, the administration on the national circuit uh, are opposed to sanctuary cities in general. Um, 
But today we have six community meetings happening from 9 a.m. to 1 p.m. roughly. The convenience of the whole stands out as an update to the Mountain Water Company purchase. And uh, just a week or so ago, um, the Mountain Water Company, which will become Missoula Water Company, wrote a letter um, to the city of Missoula explaining um, how they feel um, unconfident about how the city is willing to put a lot of stakes in pain for the um, water company as well. Um, let's see, it's it's a long letter. Um, I can probably read a little excerpt of it for you guys, um, just in terms of just kind of like giving their, uh, what they think about that. Um, the, the, this is from the short term financi financing is a huge risk. Um, this is what um, the uh, folks at um, MWC have to say. We have heard things said over the last three years and uh, that have taken us aback at times. Um, what we heard last week was by far the most shocking. Like the rest of the community, we understood the water system was not to be acquired through long-term financing that um, that had always been the type of financing presented to the courts and the community to hear that the city cannot acquire the acquisition under fixed interest long-term debt at 4% and instead is asking for council to approve a short-term um, ver variable interest debt adjust adjusted monthly currently at 2.8% alone was shocking. To hear this would be placed with private investors with no assurance it could be re refinanced in 18 to 36 months was even more alarming. Mr. Um, McGalvery with uh, Springstead even stated that the current long-term rates are uh, at historic lows. It defies logic to gamble the community's money that the rates will not increase during in the terms of the temporary variable rates financing over the next 18 to 36 months. The city of the uh, city council did um, say that they would increase rates based on um, um, projected uh, rates of increase um, solely on the purpose of the fact that it was going to increase regardless of whether or not the city was um, involved or not. Um, the whole idea is that, you know, with interest, you know, like with rates always going up regardless. So that's just kind of like, just kind of like putting that here, here and there. You can read the whole letter to the city of Missoula from, um, the, from, um, Michelle Haley, Logan McGinnis, Ross Miller, and, um, President, um, John Caps from the, um, Mountain Water Company, which will be a Missoula Water Company, and they'll be talking about. Uh, well, it's going to be a very short meeting. I don't know what they're going to be talking about. Um, this is going to be for the committee of the whole, but a lot of the other committee meetings that are going to be happening here are appointing um, people to the um, the board of certain planning boards and whatnot. But um, I have a bunch of events to talk about, so I'm going to stop it there. Um, here is an art clip being featured at the Clay Studio of Missoula, and I think it's fe featuring Sue Turrell, um, and it's called Un. Seasonable. Hey guys, welcome back. I'm going to be telling you guys about all the events that are going to be happening in and around Missoula, starting with 
spring break. All sorts of spring break camps are happening, and they've been happening all this week, but you still can join. Mismo Gymnastics is having a camp starting at uh, 8.30 this morning, pretty much happening right now, but if you're watching this afternoon, it's too late, but you can always check it out on Thursday as well, because it continues on to Thursday. Uh, this is a Mismo spring break camp. Come spend your break learning gymnastics and forging in new friendships. Uh, the full week, or a full day camp, um, is from 8.30 to... Uh, 3.30 p.m. Uh, members are $180 and $200 for non-members. There's the Trampoline Jam Spring Break Camp at Roots Acro Sports Center starting at 9 a.m. Uh, spring into the week full of ages for 4 to 12 years of age. Activities include, uh, but not unlimited to, gymnastics, trampoline, arts, and crafts, face painting, and black light parties. Black light parties. Weird. Um, I thought those were bros. Uh, anyways, Spring Break Art Camp 3D Dynamics is happening at the Mizzou Art Museum. Uh, kids age 6 to 12 years of old, 12 years of age, you have a great time when you join the artist and teacher oh, Jolana Ryan at Mizzou Art Museum this spring break. It's happening all week long. It's happening 9 a.m. to 3.30 p.m. It's $140 for members, uh, $140 and $126 for members. You will explore and create sculptures inspired of the Mizzou Art Museum, 3D art, all sorts of wonderful things that are happening at the Mizzou Art Museum. Um, they really started doing a lot emphasizing with uh, kids um, and, and art. Uh, spring Break Kids Activity Backyard Birding Bash at the M Montana Natural History Center at 10 a.m. this morning. If you're staying in town for spring break and you're looking for something to do, stop by Montana Natural History Center for some free activity for kids. And this is happening from 10 a.m. to 11 a.m. this morning um, during spring break. Um, so uh, they'll get binoculars and learn about the backyard birds, what birds what we can find this time of year, and what what they sound like and how many we can see in here. And they're going to all learn all this in an hour. Then you have communication practice group happening at 12 at Jeanette Rankin Peace Center. It's a community practice group. Everyone is welcome. No experience is necessary. It's free. It's based on the nonviolent communication model taught by Marshall Rosenberg. Noon every second and fourth Wednesday of the month. For more information, you can call them at 443 Three four three nine. Again, that number is four four three three four three nine, and uh, obviously the area code is four zero six. Um, you have the uh, History Museum at Fort Missoula, Historic Museum at Fort Missoula. Sorry about that. They're going to call me now. Um, Trailblazing Beer uh, Flights Fundraiser is happening at 6 p.m. at the Dram Shop. Are you interested in brewery pioneers of Montana and the brewers that have the reason we can enjoy a cold ale or IPA today? Join the Dram Shop and the Historic Museum at Fort Missoula to celebrate Montana brewing pioneers with the Trail Beer blazing beer flights and history uh, about each brew. $15 per flight and each beer will uh, be carefully chosen from the original Montana brewery interactive uh, history of beer exhibits, um, historical facts on each beer in the flight um, raffle, swag, and fun will be um, in abundance. So, uh, Historic Museum at Fort Missoula, you can hang out with Jesse Rogers and those guys at the Dram Shop at 6 p.m. tonight. Here are some of your public library events that are happening. Um, open open hours in the Maker Space is the Missoula Public Library. They have a 3D printer. It's wonderful. Um, Excel at Missoula Public Library, so you can stop lying about Excel on your resume. You can actually learn Excel at the Missoula Public Library at 12.30 p.m. You have afternoon matinee at the movie, so if you want to just be like, hey, I did Excel, I'm proud of my so let's go watch a movie. They're going to do a movie at the Missoula Public Library. Uh, middle School Writers Group is uh, for middle school rules. So if you're in middle school and you're at any of these Excel things, because it is spring break, you can learn Excel, and then you can go to a movie, and then you can go to Middle School Writers Group at 3.30 p.m. You can have a whole day at the Missoula Public Library. It's wonderful. Um, and you can learn, um, improve your writing skills, um, and you can have um, – um, constructive criticism um, and a lot of times criticism is like oh criticism don't be mean it's like no constructive constructive criticism is a way of saying it's like it's criticism but actually helps you um, so Wednesday movies at the Big Sky Branch Big Sky High School hosts a movie at 345 um, hosted by the Missoula Public Library Tiny Ta oh that's Thursday so that pretty much wraps up everything you need to know about Wednesday um, library events here is your Wednesday um, nightly events if you guys are going out and about um, in the Missoula area during spring break um, Top Hat is doing a happy hour sharing in the groove they're celebrating the music of Fish Imagination Jam Society Public Jam at Imagination Brewing Company is hosting an open jam session for musicians to come out and play music um, country dance lessons with um, 
instructor Kathy Clark is going to be at the Sunrise Saloon to so learn some country dance lessons, swing dancing, all sorts of cool things. It's every Wednesday and Thursday nights, 7 p.m. You have Jazz Night at Top Hat Lounge at 7 p.m. Karaoke contest at the Eagles Lodge. Craft has the karaoke at the Badlander. Mill Crate Wednesday was, is electronic music at the Palace. And then country karaoke, rocking country karaoke, is going to be at the Sunrise Saloon tonight. Um, so you can check all that out by going to MissoulaEvents.net. Um, but I have another art clip for you guys. I'm going to be showing these art clips pretty much all the way until the end of March and beginning of April. Here is Ryan Federson at the Missoula Art Museum. Now let's talk about all your Thursday events that are happening in and around Missoula. Spectrum Discovery Spring Break Camp Session 2 is happening um, 9 a.m. tomorrow morning. When school is out, Spectrum is in. Enrollment for Spectrum's UM upcoming Spring Break Camps March 20 through the 24th, 9 to 4 p.m. They'll have two sessions this week. This is Session 2, so if you already missed the first one, here's the second one. Um, you can explore a different topic every day from... Um, aeronautics to engineering to uh, geological and more making digital bl uh, bling uh, build mechanical hands fly drones and meet science role models at this action packed spring break camp and the science are in um, the university of montana phyllis j washington college of education and human sciences room 241 this is for ages seven to ten years of old and years of age and the, and for session two is 110 dollars per kid 10 percent um member and sibling discount scholarships are available for families in need and you can call them at 728 STEM to enroll. I don't know what the STEM is, so I, I can't just throw your number at you. It's 721 STEM. You can also go to Spectrum Discovery Center by uh, Googling, Googling them, and they'll give you a link to this the, to their website. Uh, Mini Naturalists uh, Pre-K Program at 10 a.m. The Natural History Center is doing a continuation of, um, instead of birds, they're going to be learning about rocks and fossils, forest friends, incredible insects, and many more. Um, this is their theme for this one. Uh, this is Mini Naturalist is Pre-K Program and engages the young children in exploration of the natural world through fun hands-on activities and games emphasis on the observation sensory skills and imagination to cultivate a positive connection with nature at an age when children are just beginning to investigate the world around them and they also have a discovery room designed for uh, the young naturalists who want to who, who want a touch table, puppets, and books, and come learn and play with them. Um, Montana Natural History Center starting at 10 a.m. tomorrow morning, but also they're doing a thing at 10 a.m. today, which is wonderful. Um, make a willow dress. Um, the Confident Stitch is being a um, doing a little um, learning how to make your own willow dress. The willow is a perfect dress to layer during winter or wear alone in the hot summer months. The fun two-piece design allows you to use or customize your dress with color blocking or coordinating prints. The dress would look great in a linen 
rayon blends as any of the summery cotton we carry. Of course, you, you can tell by the um, by the fact that I'm reading this that I have no idea what the, any of these words basically mean. Um, techniques learned include sewing a straight seam, darts, hemming, and applying um, bias facings. I have no idea what any of these words are kind of it's like when I hear bias, it's just like. Huh? That, that doesn't make any sense. Anyways, that's that's just some of your uh, highlighted events uh, for uh, your Thursday. Here are some of your public library events that are happening. Um, you have Tiny Tales at the, the Missoula Public Library at 10.30 tomorrow morning. Um, computer Electronics in the Makerspace is going to be learning everything about building computers and stuff at 3 p.m. tomorrow afternoon. Lego Club will be at 3.30 p.m. at Missoula Pub Public Library. Frenchtown Branch Book Club is at 5.45 at the Frenchtown branch at for the Missoula Public Library. Uh, those are your public library events for your Thursday. Here are some of your nightly events that are happening. You have Honeycomb Dance Party. It's going to be at Monks tomorrow night at 9 p.m. Country Dance Lessons with Kathy Clark. Um, live Jazz is going to be at the Plonk. Open Mic is going to be at the Broadway Inn. Rocking Karaoke, hosted by Aaron B. Rocks, is going to be at the Dark Horse. You got Grant Farm, which can be rock country music at the Top Hat Lounge. And then finally, wrapping up, is going to be at Ghost Carrot Recordi Records Residency Night 4 at VFW, happening tomorrow night, Thursday night. You can find out more information by going on to MissoulaEvents.net. But also you can learn more information about Wake Up Missoula by logging on to wakeupmissoula.wixsite.com slash wakeupmissoula. So nice we made you write it all twice. Um, you got YouTube. You got Facebook. We got Twitter. We do all sorts of wonderful things. Just like tweet me. I'll tweet you back. I promise. <laughs> you can also go to our MCAT.org page to live stream anything that you see on our channel. Everything that is put on our channel is also streamed on our website, MCAT.org. So if you don't get MCAT and you're watching this on YouTube, you could watch us anytime and watch any of the programs that I kind of teased throughout my show um, that I air every Wednesday and Friday from 8 to 9 a.m. I do it live. Uh, I don't do any kind of like uh, prep work. The only prep work I do is this little sheet of paper, just like, okay, intro, weather, news. Okay, this is the stuff I'm going to show. It's kind of like a little playlist of what I'm going to be talking about. I'm kind of going off the rails right now. But I have a bunch of committee meetings I'm going to be uh, filming today for the city of Missoula. Uh, Rick Phillips is on vacation this week, so I'm going to pitch in and do some committee meetings, so which are going to be just wonderful. And I hope to have something for you guys for Friday's show in city council, but maybe not. It's going to be all a bunch of like 10 minutes short. Um, community meetings so we look forward to seeing all about that for your uh, community meetings happening on channel 190 later today uh, live on MCAT channel 190 and you can watch it later on this week as well um, you can also go to ci.missoula.mt.us to find out more information about what your city is doing and what kind of meetings are coming up and how you can get involved with city programming and being the uh, the neighborhood volunteer of the year as well um, so that is just a wonderful um, resource for people who are interested in getting involved with their city government. Um, yeah. So without further ado, thanks for joining me for Wake Up Missoula. I'm Scott Ramph. Um, I'll see you Friday with a, a whole bunch of new flagship Friday and a whole bunch of wonderful uh, programs as well as um, dubbing stuff, which is going to be wonderful. <laughs> Thank mm -hmm. you.